Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of the Buy Round Interview Show. Now, today I am joined by one of the um, one of the funniest men I've met. I'll take um, that. I'll take that. In uh, on my journey in rugby league, so no, no pressure. Um, Trent Merrin. Thanks for having me, mate. Very proud to to be on your podcast. But no, it's um, it, it's a pleasure to have you on. We've got um, plenty to get through, but. Before we start the, I mean, we we look over your journey. This is your life. What what happened on the journey up here? <laughs> in life or in the car? <laughs> <laughs> With your car. <laughs> it broke down before I got here. So my good mate Ori, we had to, to do a solid and, and bring me up. So I'll shift the, the world for you, Jammer. Mm. Make it, well, it makes me... Um, Makes me feel very happy that you've your car broke down and yet you, you're still here. Do you know what's up with it? I don't know anything about engines, mate. So I'm gonna just let, let the mechanic. Up. I think the radio is gone, so it'll cost me a bit. Uh, like the radio, radiator. Ah, the thing at the front. I don't know, mate. I thought you said the radio. Come on, let's talk business. Let's let's get into it. Let's get down. Let's, let's get, get down <laughs> to business. Uh, I'm excited to talk about what you're up to now. Um, but we're going to save that. Yes. So just tease the listeners in, you know, they're like, oh, well, we're going to hear about we'll what- We'll save it to the end, yeah, the juicy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Leave us on a cliffhanger. Yeah. Um, local junior at the Dragons, uh, in, down in the gong, but you were telling me that's not the- Yeah. It's not the case. No, it's the, un, the, the mystery untold story about my career. It's, um, it all started in St. Peter's. Uh, our family lived in St. Peter's, grew up there as a, a child, um, played with, with many junior clubs in the Sydney district, the South Sydney district, started off at Marigville RSL, that was my under sixes club, and then um, moved to Mascot Jets, did a stint there, um, won a few trophies there, I think I'm still hung up on the wars a little fat, so in the sheds in there, but um then shifted to Alexandra Rovers and made some of my lifelong friends at that club. And then the, we started to take footy a, a lot serious. So, th and we used to have a caravan down at, at Wingdang Caravan Park in, in, in Wingdang that we used to go to in holidays to, to stay at as a family. And we loved it that much that we ended up doing the move. And I was about 15 and that's when Harold Matt started to happened and yeah it, it, that's when the the south coast journey started the yeah. Illawarra journey w were you always like a top of the line player no way no no so you had to work oh I, I, I was i i was a good leader in a sense of being around everyone and and and, and that but i was never a fantastic player i was always i, I started I had, my father instilled some great traits in me growing up um, with work ethic and, and training. He was a head trainer at um, South Sydney back then when I was a baby coming through and he instilled that stuff into me as a kid. We used to run the streets at five in the morning when I was 10 years old. It was consistently and then afternoon weight sessions. So it was implemented with me at a young age. So when I got to 16 and that had just come naturally and yeah. It was all hard work and ethic that that really, when talent and hard and ethic subside, that's when I started to come into myself. Yeah, you come in. <coughs> naughty, naughty. There's one. <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> oh god, um, this I'm is gonna be a <laughs> You did a little bit of dance as well. Did I did, mate. Yeah, I did. I did. I was um mum obviously wanted two girls, but she got two boys and she put us into like jazz, hip hop, uh, as it as probably what, six, seven year olds. Just a bit of fun. That's why I've taken that with me. It stays with you. I can still bust a move on the dance floor now and um that's my go to, but they, they say it helps with your footwork as well. It definitely does. Definitely did. Um, 
But yeah, mate, I, mate, we growing up back then, a, a lot was different to what it is now. You could obviously do a, a lot more, and um, my parents were very cultural and they were open minded and just threw us into everything. Yeah, it so. could, but like back then, like boys and dancing, it. Uh, well, yeah. Well, I was too young to even yeah, understand too, what yeah, I was yeah. doing, so. That's why when people take the piss out of it, I'm like, well, what, 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 you want me to say no when I was six years old? Yeah. Like, what, what, what am I going to do about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to go. Know what I mean, I, I just do what you're told. So, yeah, it's part of the journey, part of the story. And, yeah, I always talk about it because it, it is healthy. I think um, it's, it's, it's taught me some good good traits in, mm. the, in the dance clubs and bust a move. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've got one go-to dance. That's me, one go-to yeah, yeah, dance. Yeah, you've got your go-to. Yeah, that victory you've, dance. You've certainly, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've certainly mastered. Um, so you you make a, a, a crack at um, getting involved at the, the Dragons and eventually you, you come through the ranks and your head coach is arguably the greatest coach our sport has ever seen. And it's Wayne Bennett, um, and it was a, it was a very strong group of characters back then, the Dragons. How did you, uh, with the personality type that you are, how did you fit in not just with Wayne, but but also with the, the very powerful uh, dynamics of the team um, or the squad of the Dragons at that that time. Yeah, it's not. It's. Honestly, it's not until you, you would know that when you finish your career and you look back on it, you ask yourself those questions and I'm, like, I'm still in awe how it all happened for me coming through. It was the, the, the dream run. Like, come into SG Ball, 20s, come into it then, the under-20s competition. So I went straight from under-20s into first grade with Wayne Bennett in there and he brought the structure and the, the community around it and... So I was a I was a nineteen year old, just and the best thing with Wayne is is he lets the individual be the individual. He he knows personalities. He knows how to get someone up for a game. He knows what their their family life is. He he, he that's what I take the most out of out of Wayne is that he he brings the best out of that individual. So. Um, my transition was was perfect because it was so easy. I had a, a leader like that to to walk into and and just be vulnerable and, and be myself. How and old were you when you you first got into the? Would it have been the top thirty squad? I was eighteen yeah. when I started um, training. Yeah, top squad and debuted at nineteen. So and you've got Wayne Bennett bringing you. Through. Wayne Bennett, yeah. Dean Young, Ben Hornby, Michael Wayman, Matt Cooper. Doris Boyd, uh, I look at that photo now and I don't know, I look at that photo now and it look they look like men. You know what I mean? And I look at the the Pembroke team and, and not saying they're not men, it just the 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 the, the calibre of the it just shows you how far the games come. You mm. know what I mean? So I had leaders like that coming through as a nineteen year old. Um, you've got to grow up real quick. I remember some of the training sessions, I would cry after it because, well, one I remember one that I did is we, you know, the pads, you know, the suits, oh, the, the smelly suits, yeah, 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 smell oh, like piss yeah. every time you mm. you put them on, mm. right? They're the best. So I put them on, and I had it was um, an opposed session, right, with the middles. So I had Neville Costigan, Jeremy Smith, Michael Wayman, and Dean Young, and we just, and I was eighteen, and we just had to run. I had to run into concrete pretty much and I felt everything and it made me whimper I was just like that was my if I if I wanted to do this moment oh really? like so genuine yeah. genuinely leaving the field going like yeah I had tears in my eyes going I don't know if I can do this but the the the, the men that we had around us they just take you with you they built you up built you up and you got to grow up quick so as well as the leader, going back to Wayne, like he he know we all know that why he's or not everyone knows why he's a master coach unless you've been under him. You know what I mean? And he knows the right people, the right leaders, the right characters, the right brains. 
on the field and off the field to make it work. Mm. And it worked. It sure did. And that was, um, it all come to the point in, in 2010. Mm. How old would you have been in that grand final? I turned 21 two days after the grand final. Wow. Yeah. So it was, yeah. It, the, the feeling, the memories, it's still fresh. Like it's, it, to me, it, to, to me, <laughs> it, it just, it, it sounds bad, but it just come too easy. You know what I mean? Like I was led by these leaders and I'm, I'm just doing my thing. I'm just coming in and playing a stint here, playing a stint there, just being around it. And I played eight minutes in the grand final. I didn't contribute much at all. You know what I mean? But it was the I got to enjoy the journey of it and and look outside in as a nineteen year old and take it all in and and just just enjoy it, just enjoy the experience and yeah to turn twenty one after that too it was <laughs> then your twenty first you got all these rep players at at your twenty first birthday like it was yeah that's oh so they all came to your party yeah 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 oh well, yeah because you still would have been yeah we're still party season. It's still enjoying the, the the moment, so yeah, it was it was a yeah incredible time in my life, and I, I'm very grateful that I had the the chance to to take that bit of history. Yeah, it's. I just want to pick up on something you said. It it came too easy. Is that what 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 do you mean by that? Yeah, well, it's it's funny looking at it now because it. It come easy because I did the work early. I did the work as a 10 year old running the streets of Sydenham, right? At five in the morning, getting dragged out of bed, doing that, then in the afternoon doing weight sessions, dad implementing recovery, you know what I mean? Like at that age I, I was doing, I didn't know what I was doing it for. I was doing it because your idol was there pushing you and driving you and getting you out and you think that's, you know what I mean? A lot of kids don't really have the opportunity to have that in life. And I did, and I did my work early. I, I, I sacrificed so much growing up into 16, 17 year old. And like I said at the start, it, it wasn't until the talent, uh, it was opposite to me. It was like my hard work was here and my talent had to catch up. Yeah. And then when it caught up, it, it was easy. Did you think it'll just happen year on year as well? Well, it did. No, but I mean like winning the grand final. Yeah, a hundred percent. You just thought you got oh, we'll you got back. that you yeah, had that feeling. It. My first year of uh, second year of grade, but even in the first year, they were pushing for the the the, the comp again. That's when they got B by Para. We got B by Para, and I was in the twenties and watching it. Um, so the, I walked into success. You know what I mean? So, but when I said that it come easy, it's because I did my hard work early. I did it as a kid growing up in the streets, in, in my own head, in, in five o'clock in the pitch black, one-on-one -on -one with myself, running the streets, you know what I mean? Punching the bag, doing the hard stuff. Didn't know what it was for until I put that ring on my finger when I won it. Yeah. That's why I come, it felt easy, you know what I mean? Mm. Well, After it wasn't much easier. <laughs> no, well, I was gonna say in the end of 2012, Wayne leaves, mm -hmm. takes over at Newcastle. Um, what's the club like after that? Like what changed so, well, did you see? See, this is the thing. Then it was like, all right, I've got to, I've got to work hard now. So, because a few, I imagine a few senior players left, and then you took on them. Yeah. You then you yeah. as even like in your what well, you'd been twenty three. Yeah. You then become like a senior player within the group. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. So that drove me. So that that motivated me even more to, not to get back at Wayne. Because I was, like everyone, everyone that was in that team is hurt when he moves on. You know what I mean? So it's like we can do it without you. We got this. We can do it. We know what what to do. Blah blah blah. And you take on that role. You know what I mean? But we still had leaders at the club: Dean Young, Ben Cray, Ben Hornby. Like it was still there. You know what I mean? That that group. The, there was only a few that left, and we played them round one. I remember playing them round one. Still remember to this day and. It was like a grand final, you know what I mean? And we won. And it was um, it was a good experience. So, so even though he left, he, he was still his magic was still working when we were away. So, yeah, he's, he's a special character. 
he's um yeah he instilled a lot in my career and I'm very grateful for it but but in back in terms of like the, the dragons as a club that the after effect or the aftershock of Wayne Bennett Wayne Bennett um did you notice that did you notice a big change I know he, he was big on having the board away from I seen a massive from, change for influence yeah yeah Can you talk to us about the the change in perhaps that the infrastructure of the club well when you know what those massive changes were well when you when you have success and then you start to decline you know what I mean you 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 start to look and it forces you to look around you know what I mean and that's when people start pointing fingers or this and that that so that's when everyone had to realize that all right we need to do something now you know what I mean read Re, recalibrate, empty the joint, and then that's when you're trying to find that system. You know what I mean? And Wayne's good at just he knows what he does, and he just takes it with him. He doesn't let too many people know his his secrets. You know mm. what I mean? Because he wants success at other clubs. So um, yeah, he took that with him, and um, the club had to do it on their own. Then you know what I mean? We 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 went for a few coaches. Um, Plenty of staff, plenty of players to to find that that spark again. So it was a tough period, um, and I I also come into a decision to make because um, I was coming off contract, and that's when I decided that I needed to do something for my career now, and I headed off to Penrith. Yeah, but you um you ended up, did you stay living in the Gong when I was at Penrith? Yeah. Um, no, I, I was in between houses. Yeah, I obviously liked the the coastal aspect of everything too. So, um, at the start, I I had a halfway home, so I was at Pembroke, and then every day off or, or weekend after a game, I'd go and, and enjoy the coastal life. But there come a time it was probably after my first year where I actually loved being in Penrith. I loved the community. I, I loved everything about it. The heartbeat of, of Penrith and I really made it a home for me and the community helped me with that. And um, you can see that with the club that they have now, the culture behind them and, and how they interact with their community and, and they get everyone involved. And um, it was enjoyable. I actually, I, I really loved my time at Penrith and um, yeah, I hold a, a close spot for them in my heart. Yeah. Um, in terms of leaving the Dragons, obviously as a, you know, you, you had a, a life set up there um, you, you you sort of come through the system. Was it was it difficult to leave? Yeah, yeah. It was. There was a lot going on in my life at that time. It was um, it was a juggling act. It was very sudden. Um, at the time, I was probably in my ego and and judging a lot of things and just trying to not. I was trying to push things away that. Um, I needed to to take on board like where I was at in my career. Because you were you were you were uh, playing for New South Wales and Australia at the time. No, nah, no, nah, I. Had you not, had you not I, made your... When I moved to Penrith, I I I wasn't in Origin contentions. Um, I didn't play Origin when I when I was at Penrith, but I, I played for Australia. Um, but yeah, it, it it was more stuff that it, it had nothing to do with football. It was me as a human being yeah. that I had to juggle things in my life. And that's the first time in my whole career pretty much where it was like my myself was knocking on the door going, oh, you, we need your attention. Rub your leg. Like, do you know what I mean? Needs to mm. be on pause or that's not as important than what's going on internally at the moment. So it was like myself put – yeah – I'm explaining it in a, in a personal way, but it's like it wasn't as important to what was going on internally. So with that comes you don't make these teams. You you get forced to, to different areas in your life because you're, main, you're not focusing on the main priority, which was Penrith Panthers at the time. And that Cleary's coming through, Fisher Harris is coming through, Leota's coming through, you know what I mean? So there was that pressure and it was – I had to – but even though I didn't like it, because I loved being there, I loved the community, I loved being around it, I, I was a bit sour, but I, I, I knew I had to go. And that's when I went to England. Yeah. 
and um, and and did me stint over there. Yeah, and then <clears throat> you um, came back to the Dragons, where we became uh, we became teammates, but not not for the first time. Hey, Trent. Not for the first time. We got a few war stories from our All Star camps. Yeah, we've um yeah. We, Do you want to tell the listeners what you did to me at Tapanyaki? You did it to yourself, I, no, I, I think. No. You just you, you, your reaction time wasn't good enough at Tempinaki. No, just flicking the eggs, and I tried to catch it, and just like oh, oh, whoops, <laughs> bit of yolk. I'm only yoking. <laughs> no, go on. No, the, for not just a bit of whoops. You, you spill a, f- a raw egg on my jeans. Well, and shit, didn't you? Did did everyone laugh? Did we get no, the, the team I around didn't it? Think it was, like that it was uh, it's a sacrifice. Someone's got to be the sacrifice. You were next to me. me. You had to be the sacrifice. Mm. Just quite like even before that experience, I despise tapenyaki. Oh, I can't stand. Oh, when we got do off remember, the bus, do you, remember, do you remember I said, "Yeah," when I got off the we got off the bus, oh, and I was wait. like, "I said this. I can't, is, I can't believe we're going here." We're a first grade football team going to an entree based meal restaurant. Mm. Well, I've like, got give a, us a steak, give us a tea. Look, bun. not ta- flick an I, egg. I don't I, want to flick egg. Don't. Yeah, no. I'm. I'm not here for the show. I reckon <laughs> the show was actually they. They. They're pretty talented. I'll give them that. Look, I think if you're a, a teenager, I wouldn't go to um, university for it though. That's for sure. No, I think if you, you know. You, I I take my kids there like when we're on holiday, whatever, and it's. You just, do you think of me every time you go? I do there? actually. Yeah, you do every time I go to Tapanyaki, which is very infrequent. I do think of you. I just don't get it. I wouldn't go there. I, 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 I don't. I I don't. In fact, it's my least favorite type of restaurant, and I I don't think I'll ever come to like it. And every time I go with my daughters, it's painful but also so I, I already knew this going in i'm like oh geez they're gonna make us wait for ages for food there's like loads of us around there. we were there's disappointed only, from the get-go there was we? only two chefs on and they're trying to cater for like 30 blokes and yeah, trying like, to make you laugh yeah, you don't want to laugh yeah, that's I don't wanna, it. and it was already like just feed me hey, and, hey, and you're like oh can you just put the food up please mate yeah. and then next minute i'm covered in um you were with you were sitting next to james at the time too who was with us then? Brett, Josh? I can't remember, but I was covered in raw egg. I know that. Yeah, I got you, beauty. But that didn't stop me. It didn't stop we me. We had some good times. We did have some good times. That's where we first met, actually. Yeah, it is. And, and then... Um, and then we, we rekindled at the Dragons. Rekindled at the Dragons, we sure did. And put um, on a clinic. <laughs> we definitely put on a clinic. We showed them how to lead, for example. <laughs> that was um, an interesting <laughs> training session, that wasn't it? How that got leaked is beyond me, but we, yeah, we did. Mm. We did. We paired up for once in our career. Yeah, that was. Um, and it was a training session. A training session, yeah. And we didn't get picked the next round. <laughs> <laughs> no, just just for com- some context, it was, was it, the co- was it, would we broken for COVID? I think it was the week before we broke. For, yeah, yeah we no. We're coming back from coming COVID. Back from COVID. Coming back from COVID. Yeah, and back from COVID. we're experimenting with uh, the starting side, and me and you were in the in Reserve, the Reggies, yeah. and they just couldn't handle us. <laughs> there was a, a James Graham to the line, tip on with Merrim right foot, skip out, offload. <laughs> there was tries left, right, and centre. <laughs> oh um, God! Yeah, it was. Um, we just walked off laughing, heads off. Well, yeah, but that's where we're at. That's where we're at. That's where we were at. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we come back and yeah, mate, just um, that was it. Mm. Uh, I spent, it was good to come home. It was excellent to come home actually. I um, I always wanted to do full circle. Always mm. wanted to, as you do, or the club that gave you everything, debut, premierships, the, the, um, the people you meet, lifelong friends, and then to come back at the end of my career and um, go out on my terms mm. was something special. Yeah. Well, talking of that going out on your terms, it was 
a bizarre exit from the game. Um, yeah, it was. Um, well, it was. When, when it, well, it, it was bizarre and quite unique. Yeah, I, I put some time into it. Um, obviously, I, I the, that that season, I just. I was starting to question a lot of things and the voices started coming into your head about your body and the speed of the game and the rule changes and blah, all of it. It I was all there. Six again. All of it. The six, that, literally, that, that six again it was a big, made it was me a question my career. It was a tough adjustment oh, for the, made for me the question, 12 tackles on your trial yeah. line. Well, nah, that'll do me, mate. So I, just all of it, mate. And like, uh, like I had my son – um, so that changed my life completely and I just had to – I was going for a restructuring phase as a, as a man and as a parent and the culture of the, the game didn't – I didn't want to take that into my life. So – Were you frustrated? Were you, was, was there an element of frustration as well in terms of like the, the culture had completely changed and you, you – I just respect. Like I, I respected it. I respected it. Uh, I know that if the kids that were coming in now come in to our generation when we started, right, they'd be questioning it too. Mm. So I just respected that it was a changing of the guard. Um, I couldn't play at a level that I wanted to play at anymore. And instead of punishing myself, I just accepted it. Also, I wanted to to give back to a club that's given me so much over in, in my whole career, um, and I'm and I I, I want to leave that so that the next generation can see the the values that the club have. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's um yeah, it was a very calculated decision. And um, you, sorry, mate, just thinking back, you had a landmark game, didn't you? That you played. Yeah, my I uh, think it was the two fiftieth. Yeah, two fiftieth, and then, and then not not long after that. Yeah, there was um, I think it was my three hundredth collective game. Yeah, with Super League and and the NRL. So, I, I yeah, I I can't. I look back at it and I can't believe that a fat kid from from Sydney who used to do all that ticked all these boxes and achieved everything that he possibly could so why could i walk away from it sour and not give back yeah. to what it's created me so um yeah it, it, like i said it was all it was all a calculated decision and um hook gave me a night to think about it and i absolutely copped the spray that week too so people would have thought that i don't know it was that too that, that come into it as well it's like i'm an actual grown man now and i've got a grown man spraying me i'm like if we're on the street i'll probably not i'll probably fire do you know what i mean mm, like mm. i'm an adult now i don't need to communicate with people in that in that, in that manner that, yeah, you know yeah. what i mean it was just like i'd i i don't need i, I don't need to I, i've got every i've done every got everything on that like it'll this i'll put this to bed now yeah i'm opening the next chapter but then putting it to bed in the way you did, not just in the middle of the season, but to uh, go into the Dragons and say, look, I I'm retiring and um, you've been tired. <clears throat> well, there's a couple of ways you could play this. So stereotypically, a player in your position would have conclude come to the conclusion that um, they're going to retire at the end of the season. They'd get, they'd get paid out until um, they get October's pay. So a lot of them would finish, get a couple of extra paychecks, sweet and then look to attack the next phase of their life but but you didn't you you just said i'm done now and i and i don't want to send yeah i i think throughout my career like i said when i was at penrith and i had to make one of those that that big decision about when life started i had to pay attention to life before football um that really that was a shift in my life too it was like money and all that like you, you know for yourself, when you reach those highest highs and then you have a son, you realise the materialistic stuff is doesn't really matter. It's it's the genuine stuff. So I I and then going from that to the decision, like it, it wasn't it was never about the money. And I knew that we had some great 
great youth coming through the clubs that we needed to sign and start to start to think about the future of the Dragons. And I didn't want to continue playing till the end of the year and, and just fizzle out, you know what I mean? It was just like, I, I made, I've made a decision, done. Use that and do what you need with that. I, I want to concentrate on the, the real stuff now with raising the sun. So, but still, mate, it's it's pretty ad, ab, admirable. <clears throat> Sorry, it's pretty. Ab, why can't I say that word? Ad, 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 what's the word? Ad, courageous. Ab, <laughs> admirable. 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 You can tell you're a front row, mate. Why can't I say that word? Ad, it's, and it's a serious topic we're talking about as well. It's very. Ad. Drum, Tip, oh. boob, mistake. <laughs> admirable. Is it admirable? Goddamn bus driver. <laughs> well, I'll just say it. I'm, I do it rules. I admi- I, sorry. Six again. <laughs> I admire what you did. Thanks, mate. Thank you very much. See how I pulled that round? Yeah. Well, it wasn't It wasn't to, to be admired. It's it was very admirable what I've just done there by using the word admire. No, man, it, you've done well, in, in all seriousness, it is something to admire, mm-hmm. to to well, walk, I just hope walk that the away club, from yeah, well, you know, it's there, what, it's there. Hundred thousand dollars, but you know, six six figures, three hundred, yeah, mm. yeah, three hundred, yeah, it still hurts. <laughs> give it back, back. <laughs> give it back. Actually, just a, I've, I've just had a little think. Uh, give it oh, back, give it back. Um, no, but it's um, yeah, it shows a lot about who you are to the very core. Mm-hmm. That you know, it wasn't. I'll just take the money and run because you've been, you would have been entitled to that. Yeah, but I wouldn't have been fulfilled as a person. So I knew I had to, it was just part of it. You just get on with it and you back yourself. Like you, like you have with this is, this, we are creators. Like you, you finish your career and you've created this now. So it's just about belief and backing yourself that this isn't everything. You know what I mean? There's still plenty of life to, to live. Let's go and create something now. Yeah, so you... You walk away from the game after the announcement. How um, how did you feel? Um, well, I had a child, so I didn't have much time to think. It was just straight into to family life. But because, sorry, just to <clears throat> interject that usually there's um, you know, there's a, a ceremonious aspect over time, whether it's that last game, saying bye to the crowd, um, whatever it may be. Yeah, I had a, I had a great send off. The club did yeah. um, a beautiful job. For me and the family to to enjoy that it was yeah. at Wynn stadium where it all started it was local had family and friends there um but it, yeah it was just enjoyable just to to soak it all in just do a lap around and and take it in and and um walk you got, away you got drove yeah. around in the car I got, I got the full treatment i paid I for remember. the full treatment i remember it i remember seeing it <laughs> oh, no. drove around it was weird it was weird it's like something that, the, yeah the it's queen. not it's not I don't, yeah, it's not something that I I enjoy doing, but I also know that you don't get that back. Mm. So I wanted to take it in. I wanted to enjoy it and be uncomfortable to um yeah to to close the chapter of 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 that book. So but you you deserved it, mate. You deserved the admiration of the fans and the applause and um that chance. Not to not it's not saying goodbye. It's to say thank you for what you've done for the for the club like you know the the fans can uh, are unbelievable um they, they they love the moment they can be our harshest critics but <laughs> they're all good people at the, well most of them are good people at the end well, of the we, day we wouldn't have the game without them so yeah. yeah it was it was a special moment man and obviously you hold that you hold on to it for the kids when they come up and they they know what's going on and it, they you pass it on yeah so, yeah it was beautiful they did a great job yeah yeah they really did and um you can look back on your on your sport and career, um, and, be, and dancing be very, career and, and dancing and career, <laughs> and be very proud of what you achieved on the field. Um, <clears throat> something that you were known for away from the field, um, the the Borat impression <laughs> and the appearance on Fox. Um, can can you talk to us about that? I remember speaking to you about it or sending it to you, and you saying like it's the most nervous you've ever been ever been it was like i was a, a full-blown actor getting ready for a scene um 
but it all started with um, me and Jake Marquito back in, it was like two th when it first came out, I don't know, two, 2013, something like that. And we went and watched it. I think we watched it too, didn't we? And um, we, we, we met straight away, just fell in love with it. Just we rewatched it and rewatched it and rewatched it and rewatched it until we could take it off, do it at, at training and right. And this was a year that we'll, in 2000, I think it was 2010 it come out actually. And um, was, nothing, nothing, oh, how much? How much? Everywhere at training, just every, just everywhere. Non -stop. Air, just through, in, you know, when you love a song and you just run yeah. it into the ground. You know what? It's bad when you get the bug for that. The bug. Yeah, right. You get the bug and it's all you can say. And, and, but this was the thing. We got over it within two weeks. We we're doing it for two weeks and we're like, okay, well, enough now. And then everyone, hello, yeah. hello, <laughs> how are you? And I come on, yeah, yeah. It's like an introduction thing. Yeah. Every time you see someone's like, hello, and you're fuck. Oh, it's, it's normal. Speak normal. Yeah, We're humans. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But it, it, I actually just enjoyed it because every time we did it, people would laugh. You mm. know what I mean? And I, I get the most out of that. I I, like, I enjoy having fun and, and making people laugh. And and it makes people, like, when if they're not social, it, it gets them out of that and they can talk. So, yeah, it, it was great. And then um, – <laughs> So 2013 all the way till, what was it, 20, when, when did I do that Fox thing? It would have been 2020? No, 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 to about 2018, 19, mm. 2018, 19, um, Fox asked me to, to do a, a skit of, of Borat and um, I was sitting there like in the makeup room just practicing <laughs> practicing the lines. I remember watching watching it before it, just trying to get something like a, an idea of, of how to how to attack it. And then um, I'm sitting there. Because it, it was li it was live. It was like, live, and there was crowd. It was yeah. I'm pretty looking back on it, pretty proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> to sign me up. But um, yeah, I just and then when it was my turn to to go on, it just I just jumped straight into it and just just enjoyed it. Just just in full character mode, full bore at mode. And I didn't know if it was going to go well, or if, or if I was going to drop the ball and be shit, but. Um, it's good to look back on now. Like I, I enjoy, I enjoy that I did it, and um, it, it it'll be with me forever. This yeah. Borat thing. Well, because I was gonna <laughs> say, you know, you, like I guess within rugby league circles, people would do it to you, like you know, everyone. You know, but then after that, it must have just been like it, it wouldn't, it won't go away. This is the thing with social media now, and. YouTube and, and all these things, it's like when you bring up my name, that's one of the first things that pops up. So not that I YouTube or, yeah. or <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it's there, it's there. But again, it's um, it's something that I, 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 I watch it every now and then just to have a laugh and, mm. and just go, what, what is and wrong? And people still to this day will come up in the street. To come you, up to me, how oh, no, they're not there, how you? How much? <laughs> All of it, all of it. But it's great. It's, uh, it's enjoyable. It's good to – it gets people out of their uncomfortable yeah. zone and creates conversation. And I've been hit up to put on the Mancini a few times too, but just reti thought, retired dad bod now. I thought so you were going to wear it today. I wouldn't fit in it. My ass cheeks would suck it up. <laughs> a big J-bang on me bum. <laughs> you like that, you sicko. <laughs> Your picture oh, in that God, now. I am. You sick. I am, and it is uh, doing wonders for me. <laughs> um, so did did much else come from that in the in the like a, a TV or, or media sense? No, nah. no, nah, no. Nah, it's I didn't want to fully be known as that character too. You know what I mean? It was just something to step into to have a bit of a laugh, create conversation, and um, yeah, that I didn't want to go on and it consumed my whole career and life as just something to maybe later in life, who knows? Mm. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a quick break from the show to talk about our new partner, AG1. Now, I love AG1. I've been taking them for about six months now. I've noticed multiple health benefits. My gut feels better. My focus is more clear. 
Um, my intensity in my workouts has gone up as well. And this is all thanks to AG1. It's the one-stop solution for all your supplement needs. I love starting my day with a refreshing glass of AG1. So simple, one scoop in the glass, some cold water, give it a stir, or if you want to go fancy and get the shake, do that as well. But it's so easy. It takes out the guesswork with your supplement requirements. If you miss it in the morning, take it at night. I never miss a day with AG1 and I am reaping the rewards from it. And the best thing about it is it tastes great too. And you can really start to feel the benefits. Have it as a simple part of your routine and you'll see the benefits too. So if you're looking to make positive change with your health outcomes, check out AG1. You will not be disappointed. There's 75 high quality ingredients take care of all your nutritious needs every single day. It's a small habit that you start and get big results. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So to check out this exclusive buy round listeners deal, head to athleticgreens.com forward slash buy round. That's athleticgreens.com forward slash buy round. Your only place to get the free one year supply of vitamin D from Athletic Greens plus five free travel packs. Make sure you check it out or click in the show notes where we'll have that link for you as well. Please don't delay and get your Athletic Greens today. Before, Before we, we get into what you're up to now, now you'd always, always been a big advocate for cryptocurrency and I can remember when we were teammates at the Dragons I think we were doing a, a rehab session on the bike at some point and you were like mate you've got to get in you've got to get in and I'm like hmm and, and you didn't not then not then and you should have but yeah mate no it's um it's been a great so how, sorry yeah, how, how did you first get into the crypto space because you were you the were orange you, pill, they call it mate you when were, did you take the orange pill the orange pill you were one of the uh, early adopters or early ish adopters yeah um yeah well i i was just fascinated by it it was it was weird i i was watching a current affair back in 2015 and they were talking about bitcoin atms and I, i'm a tech guy I, I love tech and i was just intrigued by it and I just, and my kid's grandfather worked as the cryotherapy. Um, he owned the cryotherapy in Penrith. So every time I'd go there, um, we, we, we get on like a house on fire and I'd just ask him questions about, every, about life. And then the, the next day after watching that current affair, I went in to um, the machine. I was sitting in there freezing as you're doing it. And I just said, mate, What's this? Do you know anything about this Bitcoin? And he turned his laptop around and he was on the exchange. And that moment, I was just into it, just studying it. And it, it was like my hobby. It was my, my thing away from footy, just understanding. And when I did that, that, like I said, you take the orange pill, it takes you deeper into finance, how money was created. Like, gold the gold standard just all of it and I, it, it educated me on deeper stuff than that too like just how the, the we're run by the, the government politics and and whatnot so um and it was doing well at the time too it was it started to to do its thing and then so that, that's when i was introduced to it and then obviously i met you at, at the dragons and and the boys there and i, I pass that knowledge on on to you guys but um yeah mate it, it, it's the future it's the, it's not this isn't financial advice at all It'll get you in trouble but yeah it's um the waves coming um we all know that everything's going digital um and if you do start to learn about it it's not just cryptocurrency that you learn about you learn about the monetary system itself and and how what our dollars pegged to you know what i mean when we come off the gold standard and yeah i could i could go on for days about about it because it's so beneficial to where we 
as a country and as a human race, it's, it's like the changing of the guard as the financial system as we know it. So, um, yeah, I, it's, it's, my, it's my hobby now. It's, it's obviously helped me out and I want to pass on that knowledge as well. Can you talk to us about the, the path that, that's, that, that that has led you down with things like NFTs and, and just how, how important this space has, has become in your life? It's, it's been massive, to be honest with you. It's, um, it's led me down the rabbit hole, not just, not just money and, and changing of the guards of, of digital and like cash to digital and, and all of that. It's, it's, it's taught me a lot about myself and, and history of where we've been to where we are now. But how we got to now. Yeah. So, and as a, as a person too, like um, the character and, and trusting things, you know what I mean? Instead of just jumping into things, actually take a step back and, and do some homework and, and, and do we trust what's going on? So you start to ask a lot of questions. Like what? <laughs> oh, um, well, the inflation, for for example, like the inflation's through the roof right now. Why is it in, why is it through the roof? Because we can just keep printing money. It's not pegged to anything. You know what I mean? If it was pegged to Bitcoin, right? There's only 21 million Bitcoins to ever be created, right? So it, it, it's scarce. You know what I mean? It, it holds its value. Where banking system these days, and I don't want to get <laughs> right, but they, you can just keep printing money. That's why inflation, you know, like, that's why when you go to the shopping trolley, you get four things that cost you $300 because the, it's not pegged to anything. When, when we come off the gold standard, right? What do you mean by come off the gold standard? So physical gold, right? I don't know the year or what, what pre, uh, president, I think it was the US that, that's, that started it. Um, money was pegged to physical gold. Mm -hmm. Right, so it was scarce. It, it had so, it was yeah. two something, right? The government then took it took it off the gold standard, so they could they can control the system. So that's why they can print as much money as debt, 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 debt to cover more debt, 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 debt inflation, 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 right? Because it's not pegged to anything solid. It's just money. It's go for all. You know what I mean? Like the, the JSC in 2008, when that all happened, that was because everyone just kept getting loans and printing money and printing money and printing money and, printing money and the, the government couldn't pay it back. You know what I mean? And it just boof. And so that's what I mean by it, it teaches you about history and it teaches you about where we were to where we are now. And if you're in the right things and you do your own research, you can really position yourself to be successful in that area. But it just rolls into other things too in, in life. Like I'm, I'm into quantum physics now, which is crazy. <laughs> like it's just, it's crazy because, and the mind and universal energy and how we, we are creators of our own, our own future. Like where you are right now, you, you would have thought about this. You created this by your vision. And it's now it's here. That's not by mistake. We are all in control of our thoughts. Where our attention goes, energy flows. Tony Robinson, that. But um, yeah, not to get so deep and no, no, no. I, and, and I like not, but, do, do you know much about determinism? No. Okay. I'll look that up. Well, that's a chat for another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah but um, no, it's let me let me down some some good rabbit holes that have helped me in life, and as a parent. How has it helped you as a parent? Well, better understanding the past better prepares you for the future. You know what I mean? To see where we were, to where we are, to where we're going. You know what I mean? Not, not, not just trusting everything. Where do you think we're going? <laughs> it's scary. It's very scary. It's very scary. Have you tried VR yet? No. AI? It's all coming. Everything's coming. That chat GPT. Yeah, I've seen that. Taking everyone's jobs. It'll come. It's all, it's all, uh, the wave's coming. It's all coming. And not to be scary or woo but just. What, what's, what's the history of where we've been got to do with chat GPT, VR, 
an AI. It's just the revolution of, of humanity. We're just going to keep getting better. You know what I mean? So technology is just going to keep getting better. So that influence, that impacts our life. It's just like the pyramids to where we are now. Do we know who made the pyramids? Like, you just got to, you got to question things. You just got to question things. You don't just believe everything. Well, we're used to believing everything as athletes because we played the toughest sport there ever is, right? And you, there's no time for thinking. It's just reaction. Next tackle, next hit up, next bubble. You know what I mean? It's just reaction. We, you react, react. Social media, everything's in your face, in your face, reaction, reaction, reaction. Until you step out of it and you go, whoa, hold on a minute. You get, you, you check yourself and go, well, hold on. What am I doing that's not beneficial for me as a, as a, as a man, as a dad, and as a person? And then you, you reset yourself. So, so how have you reset? It's, it's been hard. hard. It's been hard. It's not easy. It's discipline. Like, um, I sobered up coming out of my footy career because I didn't want to bring that culture into my life. Um, women, all of it, the whole thing. It's, it's all discipline. If we can be very disciplined, and I'm speaking as a man, if you can be very disciplined in your life, you get control of your life. Discipline is freedom. Discipline's freedom, yeah. Big time. And you pass that on to the next generation. That's how we get better leaders and better men in life. Then we get better women too, because there's better leaders in men. Um, I'm, just th I'm just thinking about how you think... Um, this is all my opinion too. This is just me. Huh. I'm interested to hear more about the the negative impacts of things like VR. Well, it takes you out of reality. How do you know this is the reality? Though? That's another question too. That's, that's how deep you want to go with it. How do you know? That's how deep you want to go with it? Because there's no evidence um, really to suggest that this is real. There isn't. I can't answer that. That's it's uh, that. That's where you go deep into things, right? Like astronomy and and everything. Like, not many people would even know the stars when and what what's what and that stars are suns and oh, it's it just depends on the individual and how deep you want to understand who you you are as a person and what we are and and what our what we what we're here for. What what well, who are we? Uh, I just think we're all just individuals just doing the best we can and trying to sort the, our deep-rooted generational trauma that's been passed on to us and conditioned us to who we are now. And it's on us to recondition ourselves to our authentic self. That's what I truly believe. That's our so life can journey. You, can you repeat that again? I don't think I can. <laughs> I don't think I can. That just, that just come. But it's... We... We, we are, are all our generational trauma, so we're all conditioned by our parents, right? Mm -hmm. When you're an infant, you're parented by someone, right? Mm -hmm. So you're taking all that on, thinking that it, it's who you are, but it's not. It's someone else's that you've learned. You've conditioned yourself from someone else. Yeah, by our, in your own our, our environment. Yes, yes, definitely. Right? You're your only authentic self when you're born. Because you haven't been conditioned yet. You're here. It's not until you get picked up and you get a dummy put in your mouth and then you get blue pants or pink pants put on you and you just, then you go. Then you're with your environment. To, and I believe when you're conscious enough to understand that, you can start to condition, take away the conditioning that you don't want anymore. That's not authentic to you as a person. So that... Reduce the influence, external influences. Strip it right, strip it, strip it right back. And then implement the things that you, that are good for you. But it's almost um, impossible to not be influenced. Depending on your environment. Yeah, but in a modern day. But you can, you can, you can. But you can, you can, you can, you can influence yourself. By what books you read, by what you watch, by what you, you condition yourself with. 
Mm. Go in the forest for a week. I oh, know, it's good. Oh, no. Left with your thoughts, a bit dangerous. But do you know what I mean? Where there's no surroundings, there's, n there's nothing. You've just got to, you've just got to deal with your own shit and then break it right down to your own peace of mind. That's what you're, you, you're left with, is we're all left with our peace of mind at the end of the day. We can't take this with us, can't take this, this with us. It's all what you're, you're left with up here. So that's, uh, yeah. that's where the rabbit hole took me. It, it takes you. It takes you there if you want to be aware and conscious about it and learn about it and, and understand. And it's made me think that, and of course, Oh, it's a blessing that Rebel League gave me what I have, but it's only that in your life. You ought to take this vessel for another 50 years. So. So are you anti, because obviously with being um, so knowledgeable about the crypto space, I would have assumed that you were into that, um, advancement of things like AI and VR mm -hmm. and chat GPT. Mm -hmm. NFTs, all of it. It's all, don't get me wrong. It's not, uh, not everything's scary. It's all, it's incredible. Like you put on your Oculus and you have a look around it. Like it's, it's gonna benefit everyone business wise. You can go into VR and go into a shopping center and like, there's a, a company called Red, Red Fox Labs, which is a cryptocurrency, right? And they're, their main role is the metaverse, right? So what they're creating is their own metaverse for people to tap into. So you put your goggles on, you can go into a St. George Rugby League team store in VR, walk in there as your avatar, go in there, try on a, a, a Dragon's jersey and look at it on yourself and go, yeah, I want that. And then you click buy, right? And then it gets sent to your front door a day later. In real life. In real life. It's all, yeah. Or meetings, you can, you can host podcasts in VR. You won't have to leave your house. You'll love that, save a bit of cash, wouldn't you? No, I love getting out of the house. Go up to Morris Cafe. <laughs> Favourite cafe up the road there. <laughs> VR drinking a coffee. Yeah, I wonder drink. if you still get the same effect. Definitely, 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 it just comes down to the individual. Some people love living in that world because it takes them away from their reality. So a new reality. Or escape their reality. What is reality? We can go, yeah. Would you, would you go into the, um, into the vessel if I told you I could design a life for you? Knowing you, for as long as I have, I wouldn't go near anything that you create a life for me in. There'd be no, you, you're the ultimate designer. You can have any any life that you want, and you just go in a machine, and it all feels real. Would you go in? I'll give it a go. You got to give it a go. Can you come out of it? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You got to see what's coming. Of course. But you know it's not real. I've been there, I've tried it, I've got it. I've, I experience it, I work in the, in that industry too, in the, in the VR industry. Yeah. Yeah, with that Red Red Fox Labs. So what's your role with them? Well, it's more more sponsorships and partnerships at the moment, because they're in Vietnam at the moment. Well, at the moment, that's where they're based. So, so they claim. Hey? So they claim. So they claim. And they're everywhere because you're VR. Yeah, look, look at this. Like a little picture background. Yeah. I tried to put it on Zoom. Zoom like, hey, it's hey, 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 Stitch me up. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, man. I can't come see you. Look at the background. Hey. And <laughs> That makes a couple of tea. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> England, yeah, kids for more. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's um, yeah, it's it, it, it is a, it's interesting and it's it's all coming. It's it's already here. Facebook rebranded themselves to Meta. So, what, what do you mean? It, it's when you say it, it's already here. The future. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
the future is here. The future is here. What? You're going to you're gonna have, to, you're have to give me more. What do you want to know, mate? Well, what do you want to know? The future's here. I want to be present. Well, that's what you got to do. The, the new present is going to watch the sunrise or putting your feet in grass. Like, I know it sounds spiritual, but that's, gr- that's, that's your escape now because everything's digital. Everything's in your face. Everything's consuming. You're consuming, consuming. You're paying for things. So out of your pocket, the, 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 it's a system like that, mm-hmm. right? So how do you escape that? Well, is there anything wrong with that? It depends on the individual. I don't enjoy it. So I go do other things. Yeah, but you can put your toe into it. Can you, do you have to be a professional swimmer to jump in a pool? No. But you can jump in the pool and have a swim and then get out and dry yourself and go home. <laughs> It doesn't mean you have to, you you have to, have to be in it all the time. You can, it's just like investing. How many houses? Oh, that's a personal question, but because you own seven houses, you don't live in all seven, do you? No. I don't own seven houses. Never <laughs> <laughs> do I. But yeah, you don't have to be fully in it to understand it. As long as you're aware of it, you can build around it. So where are you going with this? There's no, there's no end to it until you're, <laughs> you're in the ground. And you just got to adapt. It's like, it's like you. It's like our careers. Like footy, we thought while we are in it, we thought it was everything. Mm. But then it's gone. You've got to adapt to your reality. It was then. It was then. And this is it now, but it's probably not going to be forever. You know what I mean? Like something, we, we don't control anything. Just got to let it be and just trust that what we're visualizing and what we want for the future, just trust that it's going to come to us. Because it, it does. Look, we're here. Your career, my career. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't just visualize and trust. You have that. But you, 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 you got to go make it work. You got to get after things. Yeah, exactly. But you have to see it before you can actually go and get it. You don't just wake up and go, I'm a first grader. Mm. It's a process. Yeah. You got to continually to visualize it to, to understand what to do. How do you learn to do speed work when you've never done it before? How do you learn to do it? Um, you get a coach. Exactly. Someone, you, you got to see it, but you see it. You know, they put the cones down and then they do an intro. So you're visualizing it before you actually jump into it. So you're, not, you're not just doing it because you don't know it, but you've got to visualise it before you can action it. So what, Everything's visual. Where's, where's your vision at right now? Um, recalibrating. Recalibrating. Um, I'm content and it's... You, you, you cre- I'm in a creating phase now. What are you trying to create? Um... I'm very passionate at the moment about uh, a voice for, for men that are struggling. Um, I feel that there's a, there's a lot in that area that needs to be addressed and I'm putting my visual focus into that. That's my creating space at the moment. <clears throat> what is it you feel men need to address? I don't want to go into it too far just yet. Um, I just want to understand it first before I put it out publicly and and start that process but um, again I'm in a phase where I have to check myself um, I have to respect what I'm going through as a, as a man and in life and I feel that what I'm going through there's a lot of people a lot of men that are going through the same thing so that's where my vision and energy is it's heading towards. Do you think a lot of men suffer from having a lack of purpose? Definitely. Definitely. Sometimes it's taken away from them. Sometimes they just don't know where to go to look for that little kick in the ass, a bit of guidance. Um, yeah, I think that it's, it's definitely a, a big area that we need to address. No, I am... I, um couldn't agree with you more and 
I've said this many times about how fortunate I was to have um, supportive people around me recognise that I needed help and I had access to a doctor and 36 hours later I was on the pathway to recovery. Mm -hmm. um, now I wonder where that or what that could have manifested into had I not had that access. Um, it's scary. It's scary when you think about it on a deep level. It's, it's very scary and it, it's a massive issue that doesn't get talked about enough. I feel. I feel that. I don't think there's a stat to measure that on. But well, it's anecdotal evidence and there's plenty. I witness all the many of the men that, that do struggle figuring life out and the numbers would suggest that as well. The numbers would suggest that big time if we looked into it. Yeah. But yeah, that's my vision. That's my, that's where my focus and energy is going as well as raising two boys. So it's, that is leading me into, I just, I, I'm passionate about that when we have men or if you have good leaders in as men, you, the, the boys, have a good um, role model to to step into. So I feel that I think is that like we were talking earlier about the influences? Yeah, yeah, big time. Just consumed without even looking at our role in life as leaders, as men, to to protect our women too. We have better men. We have respectable, loving women because they, they can trust the man. They can be around and, and, and be vulnerable for a man that they're not going to hurt them and disrespect them. So it's just a, a flowing effect. You know what I mean? But I feel that being, being, I was off socials and everything when I retired. I just, I was in myself. I just had to, so I could look at the, the consumption that everyone's taking and the, the main, like you said, priority uh, raising your children or being a role model within your community. You know what I mean? So I feel that I'm passionate about that and I'm not going to put anything out there because I don't know what it, what it looks like. It's just like that. I just one step in front of the other and until the vision becomes reality. So that's the journey that you're on. So you're still mapping? Still mapping. Still mapping. Put some time into that. So how, I was much, talking, how much yeah. time have you put into it already? Oh, I've lived it. I've lived it since I retired. Um, I've seen it. We've, well, we've had, unconsciously, we've all seen it around us growing up. You know what I mean? So alcoholism and uh, abuse and violence within your home or outside of your home, it's always been there. It's just that my attention is there now because I've got two children. So I feel me as a, a, a duty in, in my life is to pass on the knowledge to, to my, my boys so that they can grow up and, and, and be role, role models within their community. But, but it sounds as if you want to have a greater reach than that. Why not use your platform to help people? a space to invite people to talk about their issues and help in that area. Work through them. Work through them, have a, a safe place to be able to massage through it or and understand and understand that we're, we're a reflection of our generational trauma and we all need to pay attention to ourselves and what's deep rooted so that we can, we can address it and become better people so that we can be better leaders and be healthier and live a, a better community based area. It's just, it's just a flow on. Mm. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm at as a, as an individual man now with two young boys. So, um, I think that's my role. I'm looking forward to finding out where that as well as being Borat. 
as well as being boring. Right, but you've got to have a bit of a laugh every now and then too. It's nothing's right. always full serious. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, you enjoy when it. people talk about values, one of the people's values that is underrated is having a sense of humour, um, which I know that you have, which sort of brings us nicely into um, some of the other work that you're actually doing at the Dragons at the mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. um, so you're shadowing again uh, the great Scotty Stewart. I am. The bloke who made it all happen for me. Dropped me from Harold Matthews, gave me the big kick in the ass to go on and achieve the, the things I did. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm currently playing the role as a trainee under Scotty, the great Scotty Stewart, the wellbeing manager at the Dragons and learning my trade under him now. And it's, it's been beautiful. It's been great. Um, it's only with the juniors, which I love and enjoy. Um, I feel I get the most out of that. Um, and just to educate them and, and give them the tools to do the best they possibly can to get to whatever level they get to. And as well as being the best person, character outside of the, I think it's a big cultural thing. So I, I'm loving the role there and very grateful that I was offered the opportunity to, to step into it and I'll do the best I can with it. Get people to be the best version of themselves. That's all we have. Don't be Trent Marin, James Graham. Learn, learn from your own mistakes. Mm. Um, before we get into the three questions we ask each and every guest, um, I just want to get your thoughts on um, the Dragons at the moment and where mm. you think they're at. Um, I know that we've we touched on like the Wayne Bennett theory and 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 all of that, but where they're trying their ass off, we are, and I know oh, trying isn't everything, but. The juniors that we have coming through that system is off its head. It's ridiculous. And we're understanding that now and we're nurturing the absolute shit out of it because that's where it starts. You look at all the great teams that are always fighting for the, the top three, top four, sorry. They're juniors. They, they, they carry the passion. They carry the badge. They, they carry their community. You know what I mean? So... To, to, to be able to see, see what they're doing. I know that the first team, they're, they're trying their ass off and they're doing absolutely the best they possibly can and they're not getting the results that, that, that you work hard for. Um, and they're going through a bit of a changing of the guard top-wise, but um, you can only get that right if you have the development and the structure to... to well, you, but you need to get that right because if, like you, we talked about that, the level of influence that people have mm -hmm. and you spoke about it as well like you need to get the top right otherwise those juniors will be wasted so. uh, one million percent a hundred percent and it's sad it's it's sad how do you get the, the top, how do you get the environment correct to maximize the potential of the juniors well i think you just got to buy into the individuals you can, like, instead of always looking for res the, the, the results are the most important thing, I get that, right? But when you understand the individuals and what an individual has, just the outside of playing the game too, mm. you know what I mean? When you when you get that culture and that environment and you come, you're, you come into training as it being your safe place. I remember me coming through, it was, that was me escaping what was going on outside of my world. You know what I mean? I could go in there and just, just be vulnerable and, and just be me. You know what I mean? And I feel that if you can create a safe place where your players come into it and they can just drop their baggage at the door and just, and just trust and 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 have a lot. Like we used to cry of laughter. You know, like get nude in the showers and do weird shit. Right? It's it's it's. But that's character. You know what I mean? I know it's all changed now, but um, there's different ways to do that as well. So, yeah, to, to answer the question, I don't have the answer because it, it'd be happening, but I just know that they're doing everything right to to get that, that, that wheel going and to bring our juniors through. I might have to sacrifice a few years, you know what I mean? Which, to get success, you need sacrifice. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I feel we're, we're probably in the sacrifice, sacrificing a few years stage to really nurture and and bring that culture and that group of young men that we have now to step into that. And then they're the leaders. Let's not forget they've got um, a pathway system for the NRLW as well. Yeah, across all boards. Yeah. The women, the men's, it's a, it's a club cultural drive, which is what we're, we're doing the right things right now. So what comes off that, hopefully it's success. Mm. Um, last question on the Dragons. The reunion. Yes. In 2010. It was scary because it made me feel old. And then I look over at Ben Crane, he looks 80, so... <laughs> and, and, and anorexic, so... Um, that was a beautiful moment, mate. It was, it was, it was excellent. It was great to see so many familiar faces that are connected to such a great feeling. Um, the master coach was there too. He said some beautiful words after it. And, um, just brought back good memories of the, the, the connections that we've made in such an incredible time of our, our career. And, and not only that, what everyone's doing now too and the kids and, and what comes with it all. So... It was, um, and to even be a part of that was, was something, you know what I mean? It's, you don't think about that stuff. And to have it and to be there and to experience it and to know that you are a part of history, and this is a constant reminder, every 10 years you get to be a part of something like this, was, it, was, um, yeah, it was a special, very special day for the club and, and for myself. Yeah. What about the um, noticeable, noticeable absentee? Um, a couple of comments from Matt Cooper. Did you have much on that? Well, it's, it goes back to... I don't want to... Uh, yeah, I, I, I was pissed off with it after... Like, it's, nothing's personal. You know what I mean? Like, what happened back then, like, you gotta, you gotta, you've got to be accountable for things in your life too. You know what I mean? You can't just blame people for this and that and then hold on to it because it just destroys you. You know what I mean? And then you come out publicly and you're just creating... I don't know if he's... he's I don't, and I, I, love, I love Matt. Like, we, we, we experienced something very special together in, in winning the comp and he was a very high role model for me growing up too in, in the Shahaba area and he's a role model. He's a massive name and he's a massive... Um, influence for, for young players coming through but instead of talking come in and help come help me well we can create the next generation together and, and be a part of something special instead of pulling it backwards and focusing on yourself but yeah I don't really need to speak too much about it it's got nothing to do with me and it's not my even though I have spoken about it <laughs> But, um, yeah, it didn't ruin the day. Everyone still had a great time. Um, I think he just wanted to take a bit of attention onto himself. But, um, yeah, I just I, – I, we loved it. Everyone that was there um, enjoyed the moment, enjoyed it for what it was. And we could take that bit of time and take it with us forever. Did you do the dance? I wanted to. I was too far at the back of the song. <laughs> Get out of the way. But um, no, I didn't get a chance to do the dance. But I just, I just, we we did the song. We did the song. We all got together and sung the song, which is another special moment. But um, yeah, no, I, I soaked it in this time. It's beautiful. Yeah, good. Um, yeah. Well, Maz, it's been fascinating to chat. We've got these three questions that. Who knows? I've lost sleep over these three questions. Who knows where this could go? Um, if. Football didn't exist or you hadn't made it. Where do you think you are? What are you doing? Well, I'll put this to you. Are we talking before I started my footy career or now? Before. Before? Jeez. See, what path were you on as a, as a youngster had it not been for football and where do you think that would have... Um, I, I, I honestly believe something with the mind. 
I believe uh, something in in the the mind field, so psychology or very fascinated about the mind and how powerful it is. So, and being a kid there before I come into it, I was in my head every day running the street by yourself at five in the morning. You know what I mean? You you you're in here. It's all here. You you're, you're talking. You're getting to know yourself more than people that are sleeping from getting up at eight o'clock. You know what I mean? Spending extra time with yourself up here. So. Um, to answer that, yeah, it's, it would probably be something to do with the mind. Okay. Um, most interesting person where yeah. you've met? Yeah, this got me. This got me because I think everyone's interesting. Every every person I come into has their own story and, and, and that something I take from them. You've met Latsy though, haven't you? He's one of a kind. He is one of a kind and I love his energy and he put, yeah, all Put you to sleep. Put you to sleep and... When he's up, everyone's up, and when he's down, everyone oh, has man, to be the, down. The roller coaster. Yeah. Depends which lot more you meet. <laughs> but yeah, mate. No, my, my old man's probably one of the most interesting people um, that I've had that I, I've been a part of. To be honest, he's he created this. So um, I'd have to say him and, and probably Jakey Marquito. I spent a lot of um, time with that bloke throughout my whole junior career, into my senior career, and and even now. And and folks like Ori over there who um, are part of my childhood journey. So I don't, there's a lot, there's, there's, like I said, there's a lot of people that I find it very interesting. Everyone, I find everyone very interesting, but... Well, everyone's got a story. Yeah. Everyone's got a story. Yeah. But the, I find books interesting. I, I find... You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I take it on, on different ways, the, these questions. I'm a bit of a weirdo like that. But, yeah, I think um, I've said a few names there. That'll You can take that. Mm. Can we drill down on any of them? Yeah, you can go down to Jake. He's, he's all sorts. He's in all sorts. In a positive way, actually. But um, he taught me a lot about myself too, that bloke. Um, just... The, the, uh, I've never met a bloke who's on their off their own bat, flew to Romania with no contract, rugby league player his whole life, signs of a rugby union contract in Romania, in the slums, where the mafia and, and the heavies are, and on his own, on his own, no one around him, and just figures it out. Went worked at a dog food factory. And now he's inspiring young men to be better people. So it's very interesting. Uh, yeah. There you go. There's one person. There you go. That all um, yeah, yeah, very interesting. Takes the box very interesting. to Romania but on you. Yeah. Mm. yeah so I've heard Jeff. some interesting things about him as well. You should so. get him on, mate. You'll blow your mind too. Mm. Very um, interesting. The most impactful sliding doors moment you, you think about where... You know, like so for me, one might be um, the decision to, to move to Australia. You know, wonder oh, what life would have been like um, had I made a different choice. What a having children, having children, but um, is that what is that sort of where you're leaning? Uh, Always I mean, the biggest slide into a moment of mine that, that turned me from a boy into a man. But um, probably moving down the south coast wasn't really my decision but um it was a sliding doors moment i wouldn't have i wouldn't have been who i was if i didn't if we didn't make that decision you know what i mean do you wonder where you'd be if you hadn't um probably in a lot of shit growing up in in, in south sydney um yeah it was it was rough on the edges but you you there's a lot of character building in those areas too mm. So you feel low, as if those influences would have perhaps brought out a negative side? No, not really, because I, I had a great role model in my father to to keep it in line. Obviously, stepped out of the boundaries here and there, but it definitely would have went on a different path, definitely. So, children and um, moving down south, yeah, cool. definitely. All right, well, Trent, it's been um, a pleasure to... Um, to sit and chat with you it jesus I, I don't even know where we how we summarize that um we got there we got there we got there mate no. it, was, uh, it was good fun and i want to say congratulations to mate 
I've been following your process and um, you're on fire. You're doing very well, mate. You should be proud of yourself. And that was, it's, a, it's hard, the transition. It yeah. doesn't get spoken a lot about, but yeah. It yeah, sure, sure was difficult there for a moment. And you, you're nailing the intros too, I like it. Yeah. You're smashing it. And um, my pronunciate, pronunciation of, um, what was that word? Admirable. 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 Ad Got bit, I've still got some work to do. Today. Today. Yeah. I'm, uh, I've got some work to do, but we're getting there. But, Matt, thank you so much. It's been uh, a real deep dive into who you are. Mm -hmm. I um, enjoyed talking to you about your career, your influences, um, your dance, the, influ the impact of dance, the move, um, sharing the story about fucking tapping yaki and you oh. throwing raw, get, raw egg on me um, most importantly I think um, this journey that you're on mm -hmm. to influence people to be the best version of themselves because it's there's plenty of traps out there and plenty of pitfalls for us to fall into and um, the world does need positive role, positive role models mm -hmm. and it's not about having this ideal I believe um, and perfection because we make mistakes and we grow from them. Um, but I'm excited to see where it goes, where you, where it and you go. So am I, mate, and thank you for that. It's been a pleasure to be, to be on here. Finally. Finally. Finally got you on. Finally. <laughs> Told me, what, eight months ago? <laughs> eight months old. <laughs> That's what I mean. Legend. <laughs>